this video is going to be less benchmarky than you might be used to, because honestly, I'm not happy with how my benchmarks turned out. I tested them all out the day before the game was released, only for a new graphics driver and a day zero patch to roll out, rendering my results obsolete. So I did them all again, but was a bit unhappy with some of the benchmark figures because I got weird things in CPU bottlenecked areas like the 3060 Ti outperforming the 3080 and the Vega randomly doing really well in one area and stuff like that. But before I could retest those, then another patch rolled out. And while I don't think it has changed the performance too much, I felt it was a bit irresponsible to start mixing and matching results before and after. So instead, I'll rely on my typed notes for each card, in each area that I tested to give you an idea of what it will perform like in this game, because I think it might tell more than benchmark numbers can anyway. To put it simply, Cyberpunk's performance is inconsistent. In the desert, and when walking about some interiors, it'll run pretty well but other areas, like the city street, are noticeably more demanding. And then there are some places where the game will be even more demanding still, grinding to a slideshow even when on a GeForce 3080 and for no obvious reason. I experienced it in a hotel lobby, and sometimes just when driving about and looking in a certain direction. This is just something you'll have to expect if you're playing Cyberpunk right now. I won't be covering these instances in this video though. Instead, I'll be covering what I consider to be a reasonably worst case scenario when in the city. But just know that there are some places that will perform even worse, but that will hopefully be patched soon. And here's what I got, with different graphics cards being tested in one of the game's demanding city street areas. The testing was done rather unscientifically. I'd run about the place, shaking my head about and judging how playable it felt to do so. I understand that 60 FPS is the generally accepted standard to hit, but also know that below that figure can still be playable, and at some times, preferable. Especially if it allows for a laggy but coherent picture, rather than a smooth but blobby mess, which is often the choice you'll have to make if gaming on slower graphics cards. So here's a breakdown of what these three different descriptions mean. Smooth. If a game falls into this category, then it's likely above or reaching 60 FPS. If I give a result this, then I consider it to be highly playable, with mouse movements that feel responsive enough that, if I miss a shot, I'll blame myself instead of the game. The ones described as laggy fall just below smooth. It still looks smooth if you're watching, but if you're playing then you can feel it isn't running quite fast enough to be as responsive as it could be. Mouse movements may feel more sluggish, driving should still be okay, and I'd consider this to be playable if not ideal. And lastly, cinematic. At this point, you're at 30 FPS or below, and it's visibly laggy to watch the screen and pretty damn horrible to play like this. I would consider this to be unplayable for anything other than casually walking about the city to admire the views. Anyway, here are the results. The Ryzen 2200G, which I tested in an earlier video, is only sort of playable at sub 720p resolutions, and is never what I'd consider to be smooth. You can get by with it, but the game will look horribly blurry. I settled on medium settings at 75% resolution scaling at 720p. The rest of these tests were done with a Ryzen 3 700X processor. This won't remove the CPU bottlenecking from occurring, but should hopefully minimise the impact it has on the results. So the fun starts with the Radeon 380. I would run this game at 720p low settings, and for the most part this will feel quite playable. We're talking 50 frames a second in most areas here. This dropped to an average of 47 FPS in the city streets, which is still reasonably responsive. The other setting you could try on this card is 1080p low. I've labelled this as cinematic, meaning it won't run well, but the resolution increase makes visuals significantly crisper, which makes exploring the city a much more beautiful experience. Just don't expect to be able to shoot straight at these settings. The next tier up in performance that I tested was the GeForce 970 and the Radeon 480. When I first looked at Cyberpunk's required specs, it seemed as though it would run worse on AMD hardware, but this really wasn't what I saw in my testing. Now the Radeon 480 is more comparable to the 1060 for speed. On paper it should beat the 970, having come out later and having double the VRAM. Sorry, 2.29 times the VRAM. But even factoring this in, it outperformed what I expected from the card. The Radeon 480 was about 25% faster than the GeForce 970, which pretty much means you can move the graphics preset up one extra notch and still get the same performance from it. Both cards managed at least 60 FPS in the 720p low settings benchmark. Cool. But the Radeon 480 managed to keep above 60 FPS a lot of the time at 1080p too. If I was playing Cyberpunk with these cards, then I'd game at 1080p low settings on the GeForce 970 and 1080p medium settings on the Radeon 480. 
At these settings, you'll still feel a bit of lag in your mouse movements when the action picks up, but it would be a shame to drop the settings further since these cards are still just about powerful enough to look okay at okayish frame rates, especially the Radeon 480 at medium settings, which looks pretty decent. I might even want to try and hit that on a GeForce 970 card at 1080p, even if that means dropping the resolution scaling a bit to get acceptably playable performance. Next up the chain is the Vega 56 and the GeForce 1080. These were the high-end cards about three years ago. Now, since it was more comparable to the slower 1070 Ti at the time, the Vega card should be slower than the GeForce 1080. But guess what? It managed to be about 5% faster in most situations. Granted, this wasn't enough to make the experience with one card different from the other, but it is nice to see Vega scoring a win, perhaps thanks to its faster HBM2 memory, or possibly thanks to a splash of fine wine. Both of these cards are smooth up to medium settings at 1080p. I deemed the experiences on both to be laggy at high settings though. They hovered around 55 FPS here, but action would be enough to drop that to below 50. The cards have enough horsepower to handle the game at 1440p high settings if you locked it to 30 FPS, but let's face it, who wants to do that? I was pleasantly surprised by 1440p low settings. This proves to be a bit less demanding than 1080p high, and while you sacrifice visual quality, the extra resolution makes the edges of everything really crisp and clean, which was something I grew to appreciate by day 3 of testing these cards over and over again through the same gameplay benchmarks. And last I tested the new GeForce 3060 Ti and 3080 cards. You'd expect these new cards to perform well, and they really do, but even with these, you still have to make a choice. Ray tracing or no ray tracing? If you choose not to game with ray tracing, then both of these cards are 1440p monsters. Even the less powerful 3060 Ti will handle the game at ultra quality 1440p at playable frame rates. And that's before enabling DLSS. If you enable that, which you really should, then for the most part the game will be comfortably above 60 FPS. I'd also recommend adding some sharpening to the image. DLSS quality setting looked plenty detailed enough, but the result did feel less contrasty than native, which a bit of sharpening over the top of it sorted out nicely. And then we get onto the matter of ray tracing. In some parts of this game, the cards will handle ray tracing just fine, but there are other areas where ray tracing will slow down even the GeForce 3080, to the point where you'll probably want to turn it off. These are the different ray tracing presets. RT medium is a bit misleading. It's ultra settings, but with extra medium levels of ray tracing on top of it, so this is expected to be slower than non-ray tracing settings. And then RT Ultra enables almost every ray traced option. It's brutally demanding in some places, but then still surprisingly fast in others. Ray tracing adds another variable to a game that already has a variable frame rate, and it's because of this that I'd recommend keeping it off if you want the game to run smoothly most of the time. Visually, I'd say the differences ray tracing makes to the lighting and shadows are subtle. You'll spot the differences in comparison shots, but in practice it's not too noticeable. The ray traced reflections do look noticeably better in some places though, but it's still hard to say if it justifies the performance penalty. Ray traced reflections aren't even on until you switch on RT Ultra preset. I've played chunks of this game on a GeForce 3080 with everything on, and it's performed perfectly well until I reach a certain place and then it'll slow down badly enough that I'll disable ray tracing completely. Then an hour or so later I'll enable it again and be surprised to find that it's perfectly smooth again. I hope the ray trace performance is something that will be stabilised in later patches and driver updates. Cyberpunk's futuristic, shiny setting is certainly a place to showcase the technology, and players in the future should switch it on, no questions asked. But right now, with today's hardware, the performance impact is too great to justify if you're just looking to play the game with no problems. The GeForce 3060 Ti performed somewhere between 30 and 40% slower than the 3080 did when ray tracing was on, so has less performance overhead to play with and so is even more susceptible to the game's variable performance. Even on RT medium preset at 1440p with quality DLSS, it drops below 60. It might still be reasonably playable, but when a card's this capable, I'm less forgiving of anything less than a smooth performance. It seems such a shame to compromise playability when the card's capable of a better experience on a lower preset that still looks great. You won't complain about how just Ultra looks. Not even high. If you're curious about ray tracing and just want to casually stroll about the city admiring reflections and technically correct lighting and stuff, then by all means, enable it, even on the 3060 Ti. Ramp it up to RT Ultra, cap the frame rate to 30 and gawk at stuff. But I wouldn't play the game like this, especially not at 1440p. In conclusion, Ryzen 2200G for 360p gaming at low settings at 30fps, Radeon 380 and possibly the GeForce 680 for 720p low preset, GeForce 970 for 1080p low, 
Radeon 480 for 1080p medium, Vega 56 or GeForce 1080 for 1080p high or 1440p low, and the GeForce 3060 Ti for a great 1440p experience, or for an ultra 1440p ray trace experience with compromises. And the same applies to the 3080 but with fewer compromises. Let's hope for some performance optimizations in whatever upcoming patches they're working on. There are already a few things people in the community have suggested in order to improve performance, which I might investigate further in a future video.